Hey, thank you for tuning in. I'm in the wonderful state of uh, New York, we're actually in the city, and wonderful I got to meet up with uh, Dr. Brian Hutchinson, which many probably have known or seen on YouTube. Probably about 60% of what I've learned in cervical instability, upper cervical instability, and uh, even the symptoms that come with cranial cervical syndrome, I've learned from him and uh, various doctors he's worked with. So thank you for taking the vacation here, first of all, and uh, for meeting us. It's a pleasure to be here, Robert, right in your home city of New York. And thank you for spending time, and I'm looking forward to chatting with you today. So. Thank you so thank much. You. So uh, this is, of course, my actually first real interview that I've uh, wanted to do with uh, various doctors who are uh, well-skilled in this particular area. And uh, my, my original goal, which is suffering from cervical instability myself, now I might look normal right now, but that's the medication talking. So I wanted to start off with explaining about why I started CCI Fund, and it's a slow progress but there's just a lot of information that, that people don't know, even the medical industry doesn't know about these uh, particular conditions, and especially how to find them on radiologic studies and or see those symptoms. And a lot of us tend to be pushed off into various areas that are not addressing the actual root cause. So Dr. Hutchinson, I wanted to start off with a, a number of questions. Um, I've seen a lot of your videos and you started a three-step process, a rehabilitative cervical or dosis technique. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Of course, Robert. Thank you so much for uh, bringing that one up to start. And the three-step process that I created is where you get a lateral x-ray and then we fit you with a certain kind of spinal rehabilitative weighting system and you use it you know, as prescribed. And then after four to eight weeks, we recheck on that lateral x-ray to see if there's been progress. Now, you probably will ask the next question would be, what about all the other factors that come into play? And typically we, we do review an entire DMX, all of your MRIs, we review all the other scans you have, because that can help to determine what weights that you're gonna be able to tolerate. We also do an in-person exam or remote. I can assess you know, how your body is in space. You can show me with an athletic shirt on, you know, how you sit, how you move, your, your range of motion, what you're able to tolerate, and I learn about what's gonna be best for you so that we can give you therapy to do at home that's gonna start improving your cervical spine curvature and bring strength. Sometimes it's just prehab, but sometimes you get pretty far with, with just even a remote type of a treatment plan like that. All right, thank you. One of the things that a lot of patients run into is when we think instability and dealing with weights, curve correction, and they're, even myself, I can say that I'd be rather, rather fearful that would the weights not cause the head to shift in the improper direction? Or, and I know that you yourself apparently fixed uh, or fixed your own instability. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty incredible because when you have cervical instability, yes, you need to be careful. You shouldn't be doing high velocity adjustments when you have upper cervical instability. You know, that is one of the contraindications to high velocity adjusting is instability at that level, level or segment. Um, but Robert, to answer your question is, this is the only kind of care that I've been doing for the last three years. It's been the very hard upper cervical cases with 95% of people having significant instability. And I figured out a way to know what people can tolerate. And these people that are going through these problems, they're usually suffering every day already, right? So, you know, every day you may have a quick window where you feel decent for 10 minutes, an hour, two hours, at times you feel better than you know your worst, but you know you're already having a hard time. And what we found when I worked at my previous job was that over 95% of people could start care with spinal weighting while they were beginning other regenerative medicine techniques or procedures. And there was only a very small percent that needed to get more stability before they could tolerate weight. Really? Yeah, because in my in my in my course in this, and a, and a lot of patients probably feel the very same way, they've gone to a particular uh, professional that wasn't very well trained in, the, in, in, as in fact, in trying to find instability. And they've done those manual thrusting techniques. And I've been there with many chiropractors um, 
and I'm not lashing out at any chiropractors. They're all good doctors. It's just a lack of training. And I don't, I, maybe you can just quickly tell me, is this something that's taught in school? Cervical instability or upper cervical instability? Is that something that is trained to be looked for? It, it is, it is yeah. taught in school. However, the reason that we're here today is because there needs to be more research into upper cervical instability. And I think that it's becoming more widespread knowledge that the upper cervical spine can control almost anything in your body and can cause symptoms that people would have thought otherwise that it couldn't, you know, from heart fluttering to heart palpitations to tingling in your toes to brain fog to feeling like you're not yourself, like you're on a boat. I mean, the list is probably a hundred different symptoms or more, maybe even 200 that you could feel, feel like depersonalization, like you're not in your body. You could feel incredible amount of anxiety and you're doing everything else right. You're on supplements, you know, you're, you're praying, you're meditating, you're, you know, you're eating well, you're trying to be a peaceful person, but you still feel like you're going insane. And so the structural or physical pathologies that can cause these very severe life-threatening conditions are still not fully understood. And that's why we're pursuing this area and bringing light to it. So uh, with that being said, yes, we learn about it in chiropractic school, just as medical doctors learn about upper cervical in medical school, but it might only be a day or it might be a week. And you know, this area to become really good at it takes a lot longer, probably at least a year or years to really get good at it. So.